I have got some serious repair panels to be making for the T25 van this summer. Um, I've got a section of roof I need to repair, uh, which is curved, but it's also got a return loop, which I'd like in a nice straight line. Um, I've also got to repair the battery tray areas in the engine bay, so the, one of the corners have gone. So I need a way of creating a flat piece of steel with a nice 90 degree corner. Um, also, last week when I was making the sides for the wood burner, I spent 10 15 minutes bashing a piece of steel into shape when a sheet bender would have probably done it in a minute. Um, so that was the point I decided we need to make one of these, which is my sheet steel bender. And it works really, really well. Well, it works well eventually. Uh, so this is how I've created it and a few things I did wrong along the way. Enjoy. The basic parts I'm going to use to construct the metal folder uh, is recycled steel as usual. Um, I've got two lengths of um, two inch angle um, and it's about four mil thick. So it's pretty decent chunky stuff um, and that's an old fence corner post uh, I'm reusing I've chopped up. Uh, I've also got a length of one inch angle uh, it's about two mil thick so again pretty rigid stuff um, and two hinges, uh, just standard internal door hinges. The width of my sheet bender was basically determined by this length of steel because it's the, the longest piece I could find. Uh, I've neatly cut it down to uh, 75 centimetres or 750 mil. I don't really want it any wider than that because I plan on mounting this particular bender to my vise. And to do that, uh, I've got a couple of offcuts and I'm basically going to weld some kind of ear onto the bottom of it so that I can clamp it in the vise. Uh, and then it's basically it's removable so I can pop up on the vise, bend my metal and then when I've finished I can take it away and stand it up in a corner uh, nice and out of the way. Um, I don't really have enough space in this garage to have something permanently mounted to a bench like this or to the workbench um, so I need to keep uh, as much space free as possible. If you're going to be mounting yours onto a bench you'll probably want to create a couple of ears uh, so you can bolt through and bolt it onto the bench or something. Um, I say it depends on, on how you're going to be using your bender and where I guess as to how you build this. Another reason not to go any wider than I have is basically the steel in my garage tends to be about 600 mil wide. Um, so anything wider than that is kind of a waste and, and a waste of space and materials, I guess. Um, I can't see me wanting to bend anything uh, the length ways at all because uh, that'd be a pretty big, hefty repair section I'm making. For the handle, I'm planning on using this bit of bent tubing. Um, I'm not sure what it's from originally, so I'm recycling all bits of steel again. Um, I'm pretty sure it'll be strong enough. Um, to, to be used. If it's a problem I can always stiffen it up or give it a bit of uh, additional strengthening. Um, I'm planning on making this removable um, so that when the bender is stored away somewhere it's a kind of a more compact unit. Uh, also because I'm clamping on some vice I don't want the, the vice handle uh, and this handle to, to get in the way of each other when I'm clamping it on and removing it. So having it removable I think would be a really good option. We're also going to need a few bits and pieces, nuts and bolts um, but say so I'll show you those when we get to them. Because of the hinges I've used, they don't sit entirely flat. Uh, it's like a rounded there look. So I'm just clearing some a small amount of metal off this uh, joint here. So when we put that on there, it sits nice and flat. So we're going to take our two lengths of angle, put them together and effectively make a T-section from it. We've got our hinges, they're going to be welded on the ends. I'm just going to mark them out centrally so that when I weld it on later it makes it easy just to align it for our weld. We want to get them perfectly flat before we can put our hinges on. Cool. 
So I made a simple bit of steel, uh, a little L shape, uh, so that'll clamp into the vise and hopefully I can just slide it in and uh, it'll hold firmly in place. Uh, that needs to be attached to the bottom of the sheet bender. So it's currently like that and it will fold up. So we need to attach it to this front one here facing backwards, like so. Right, let's test fit it. Like it so far. Right, time to get a handle on. Next we've got to attach our one inch angle. Now that's going to sit on the, the back half. Uh, so this is the front with the handle which bends up. So effectively your steel is going to be coming in here and bending up and it's going to wrap around this. So this needs bolted on uh, to the back half. Uh, this front edge here has to be in line with the centre. Uh, and because of that and the hinges I've used it means I've actually got to clear the, clearance the angle a little bit to go over the top of the hinges. Now where the hinges are, you can't slide the, the, the steel in anyway, so it's kind of an unused area or unusable area. Uh, so in theory I could just chop it off, uh, but the problem with that is I've got, I've got to clamp it down somehow with the nuts or bolts or some kind of uh, mechanism. Uh, and if I leave these on at the end, it means I can clamp it down at the ends and I don't lose any more usable width on the actual bender. Uh, so that's what we're going to do now. So next we have to attach the angle to the bender. Uh, to do that we're going to use uh, a couple of tensile bolts I've got. Uh, so basically we're going to drill a hole through here. The bolt's going to be attached on there, probably zap it on with a welder. Uh, and then in theory this will sit down on top of it. Um, and we can, <laughs> we can use the nut to uh, clamp down at the bar and I'll clamp the sheet metal before it's bent. Uh, position wise of this, um, rather than going exactly on the the centre line, I'm actually going to bring it forwards very, very slightly, about a mil forwards, so you can't really see the hole uh, along the line. Uh, the reason being, when you fold it up, or at least on mine with my hinges, when I fold it up, um, the gap down there is about 2 mil, um, and I can't see me bending steel any thicker than 2 mil, so that's kind of the gap I'm, I'm aiming at uh, for a nice tight bend. So I've made a few last minute additions. The first one is a pair of springs. Uh, they fit over the two bolts and they go underneath the clamp bar. And what that does is it maintains a small gap between the clamp bar and the, the bottom of the bender. It just makes it easier for sliding metal in. Uh, so when you release it, it comes back up on its own, nice and easy. To hold the clamp bar in place, I made a couple of little spacers with a profile on them so it just clamps on there nicely. Just helps stop in the stop any rock or movement in the, the clamp bar while it's under load. Because I couldn't find any smaller tube to make them with, I had to use a pair of washers. 
And then I didn't have any wing nuts, so I've made a couple of kind of wing nutty things, which are nice and easy to use, especially with one finger. Oh, DJ time. So it clumps all the way down with one finger now. Easy peasy. Got our handle. We have got a complete sheet steel bending machine. <laughs> Gonna bend some stuff. Let's do it. I'm not sure what the steel's from. It's galvanized stuff. Um, it measures 1.25 mil on the vernier. Um, let's see, we're gonna see if we can bend the entire length in one go, nice and neatly. So what did I do wrong? Well, first thing is the hinge, it's just not up to it at all. Uh, I thought they'd be strong enough, but they're starting to bend and twist, um, and they just can't take the force, I don't think. Um, clearly it started to bend look there, and it started to peel away from um, the surface of the bender, and also because I didn't weld all the way around it, that probably didn't help either. Uh, this hinge is aligned so that the, the two ears there are on this side as well. Um, and if you look at the opposite side, it doesn't seem to have bent quite so badly. So uh, when I reattach a new hinge, I'll be putting the three parts of the hinge to this side, to the part that moves. Um, and hopefully that'll stop it from twisting down at the ends as well. I actually aligned it so it looked nice and neat and I got the pin at the end, but that's what happens when you go for pretty over functional, I guess. Uh, so the new hinges are significantly chunkier. The next problem was the clamp bar. Now, it just bent like a banana, um, it really did. And I've actually tried straightening that, so it was worse than this when it first came off. Um, so I thought this would be more than strong enough. It's a decent chunky bit of steel, so it's a good, good two mil at least, um, but clearly not. Um, also the fact that I aligned it very slightly forward of the center line maybe caused an issue. So maybe it was causing uh, additional leverage on the actual um, clamp bar so it twisted and that's why it twisted up in the centre as bad as it did. I don't know if that was a problem or not um, but this time around when I remake the bar I'm going to centralise it to the gap um, just to make sure that wasn't the issue. Okay mark two. I've taken no prisoners, welded all the way around those hinges hopefully to make sure nothing peels or bends. The clamp bar is now a significantly chunky bit of steel, 5 mil thick and it took longer than I'd like to admit to actually create uh, for me a bigger chunk of angle. It's been the last 40 years underground so I'm hoping it's going to last more than four minutes uh, in my bender. So the Mark II is pretty much the same as the Mark I to be honest. Uh, obviously I've increased the size and the, the strength of the hinges, thoroughly welded around them so they're, they're well attached to the base and we have a significantly chunkier clamp bar. Uh, everything else remains the same so the build process up to this point is is the same basically. Uh, there's one slight difference because I used chunkier hinges it meant the the pin profile was was more rounded So I had to remove more steel clearance more steel from the base plates um, So you gotta bear that in mind if you're gonna use chunky hinges of this style at least um, Because if you're starting with thinner steel as the base then you might run into trouble if you take if you're taking a lot of steel away but other than that as it was really so I thought we'd start doing something that's easy to bend. <laughs> so we're not destroying it straight away. So we can have one positive bend I hope from this before I completely knacker it again. Let's find out. It's kind of cheating because that's aluminium. <laughs> but I wanted to make sure in principle it was working how I wanted it to work and I get a nice tight bend which it seems to do. So I'm relatively happy if it can do that with steel. I think we're there. So let's get our piece of steel which destroyed it last time and see if it destroys it again. Fingers crossed. Ooh, 
<laughs> I thought I'd destroyed it to be honest with you because I don't know if you noticed as I was bending up the clamp bar started to bend again um, so it's not bent now so there's nothing permanent at least and all the hinges are still attached uh, and it looks in good order so overall we've got a win there at least uh, 1.2 mil half a meter length clearly is the upper limit of what this bender at least is capable of doing um, I can't see me bending anything as chunky or long as this uh, on a very regular basis anyway so certainly not for a pair of panels and stuff not the, the size of the ones I hope to have to do <laughs> uh, but no overall I'm pretty happy say so, we got there in the end uh, and I hope it helps you guys create something similar take care bye bye